Hi everybody, I'm going to demonstrate um, some of the tricks of working in Inkscape. Um, we were having a little bit of trouble with the SVG files and the text, and it turns out it works a little bit better if we just preserve our graphs as a PDF for now. Um, and so I just used this code, ggsave. Um, I'd already created my violin plot. All you have to do is put, put the path basically in quotes, and then just name your output here. Um, device.off is the parameter um, that's just required, I guess, to save it. So um, the, the period uh, forward slash is um, my mapped path. So I'm just going to go ahead and run that chunk. Um, it says it's saving um, a, an image there. So um, like Emily showed us, we can specify the output size, but I just used the default size of the graph itself. So I can just double check. This is in my files, and it's in here. So I've got my violinplot.pdf, and then I'm going to open this in Inkscape. So I'm just starting up Inkscape, I think. Yep. OK, file open, violinplot.pdf. OK, so it's asking us for a few things. We're just going to use um, all the default settings. And here's our working Inkscape plot, which is being very stubborn. OK, there we go. Almost. <sighs> OK. So there's a few things that I just want to demonstrate for you um, that aren't completely, I think, intuitive. You can shift plus or minus um, to increase or decrease, or if you're working with a mouse, you can control scroll. Um, things are often grouped, layers, and so what I usually do is just use the selector tool and select the whole thing, right click on it and ungroup. And sometimes you have to multiple ungroup, but I think it's a good idea to just get everything broken apart. And I just keep right clicking on it and selecting ungroup until that's not an option anymore. Now everything should be an independent uh, item or layer, but I'm just going to keep checking. So it looks pretty good, but I think this means even the individual dots are indiv individual vector graphics that can be moved, so you have to be a little bit careful. Um, let's say we want to deal with our text. So for example, if we don't want this to say state abbreviation, we want it to say something else. Um, you can double click on things, sometimes that'll open the text and font, or you can just go up to, uh, let's see here, layer, path, object, text and font, text, text and font, and that'll open up this window. To get these things to work though, you really do have to have them all ungrouped. So let's just say I wanted to make this a bigger font size, hit apply. Now, if you can notice, it's really crowded. So I usually go to text, remove manual kerns, uh, and that overrides the, it's trying to preserve the original font settings that come in with it. And if you remove, I don't know if it's possible to select the whole thing and then go text, remove manual kerns. That might be a good thing to experiment with. Um, so other things that we can do are like, select this whole spiel and then just hit delete and get rid of our legend. We don't want that. Uh, maybe we don't want this at all and I would say we do not because it's obvious and we're going to have some kind of a title. Um, let's try rotating this entire thing and then we'll deal with some fonts. If we wanted all of these guys um, let's see here I'm using the sh well right now it's acting like it's grouped so I'm going to Actually, let's try this this way. We can try and ungroup it, but I wanted to rotate those. So they're all selected right now. Let's try rotating uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise. And that's not what we want to do. So I'm going to Control Z to undo it. And I'm going to ungroup this. Now I should be able to, haha, uh -huh, they're still grouped. No, they're not. Let's try it again. Nope. ungrouping them again 
and now I have individual pieces. So if I shift select these now as individual pieces, I should be able to just selected all those guys. I'm going to get rid of our tick marks. So once they were ungrouped and I selected all of them at the same time and hit rotate counterclockwise, it left them in their positions and rotated them. Let's try the same thing with the numbers. And what I'm doing here is accidentally grabbing the ticks. I'm going to leave the ticks for these numbers because I think we're going to need them. So right now it's selected all of them. I'm going to ungroup. Can I grab an individual number? No. So try it again and now try the individual numbers. And I've got them. So I'm going to shift select the three values, rotate, and it rotated two of them because I must not have grabbed this one. I must be grabbing my little tip mark. Okay, there we go. And then obesity, same thing. I'm just going to get it out of the way for now, but I do want to rotate that. Um, and let's Maybe I made it upside down. Text, remove manual kerns. I did. That's awesome. Okay. Um, so let's rotate this whole thing and then we'll do some more tricks. So I'm going to select the whole wad, right click and group the whole thing, and then I should be able to select it and rotate it this way. Did I get everything I wanted? It looks like I did. I'm going to ungroup. And rotate that guy back. OK, I want all of this and my numbers. Let's go ahead and try and select it this way. And I want to move that down to the bottom. And I want the numbers below. So I'm shift selecting. Those are my tick marks. And my values. Let's keep those down below. Whoa, what happened? Oh, I think I've got a box here. I'm going to delete that. So there's my 20, 30, 40. All right. Um, Obesity rates is probably something that we could label down here. Let's go ahead and increase that font size. Make sure that it's ungrouped from everything. Okay, select it. Go up here, let's make it more like font size 14. Apply, and let's remove the manual kerns. And I want that to say obesity rates. Let's see if we can affect that over here. Obesity rates. All right, moving forward. Another thing I want to do is desaturate these, and this is a good thing to know how to do. So ungroup again. Make sure we get down to the individual items in here. So if I click on this fill element, there we go, I can go to... Uh, let's see here. Object. Let's try double clicking on it and see what that gives us. What we want is the fill and stroke. Let's right click, fill and stroke. I'll close this guy. Okay, so it brings up the color wheel. It may come up as RGB. You can work in this however you want. You could apply a gradient if you wanted to. I find this one the easiest to work with. Let's just desaturate it and lighten it up a little bit. You can just kind of click in here until you find something that works, something that you enjoy. You can go all the way to gray. We can keep a little bit of color. We can do the same thing here. It's, I think, a bit more intuitive to do it this way. Um, you can see the colors that you're working with. You can kind of... Um, I don't know, I guess play, and this just feels more intuitive to me. You may want to get rid of the colors altogether. The other thing we might want to do is increase the heaviness of the central line. So um, I'm clicking that and then shift selecting the others. I 
I think I need to make this a little bit bigger. I'm having eyesight issues. All right, so select, shift select. I controlled, shift select, shift select, and shift select. And then we want to go to stroke style, and we can increase our width here, like maybe go up to four. See how that looks. So we've got a heavier central line. We could do the same thing and kind of desaturate these guys if we wanted to. So if I uh, shift select those, we could go to sh uh, stroke style and decrease the transparency just to make them disappear a little bit. You could make them thicker and transparent if you want to. So you could play around with those to your heart's desire. Do whatever you want. Um, another thing that might look kind of good is instead of having these labeled over here, which is very conventional, and you can leave it that way if you want, but maybe we want to label it right in here. So again, we want to get our text box open again, and we can just type that in there. I would test, remove the manual currents just to make sure it's spread out right. You can control Z easily in Inkscape, unlike um, in arc. That does seem a little small. Let's beef those up a little bit. Okay, oopsie. I keep grabbing something else. All right. Um, let's say we want to try and put our Utah label down here. Are we going to have enough room? It's a little bit crowded, so I'm going to move that out of the way, and for right now I'm just going to try and select uh, I'm grabbing onto something here. I'm going to delete whatever that is. It looks like it's a fill on the back of the image. And delete that. And then we've got this thing. And so selecting the whole thing, I can use my up arrows and just kind of move that up a little bit. If it ends up looking funny and you can't get away with that, then maybe you can just adjust these a little bit and push them a little closer together. Uh, but going back to text, then it's just a matter of updating the text for Utah. Do this while it's selected. There are keyboard shortcuts to all these things as well. You just have to get yourself familiar with them. Um, and let's see here. Go back and make that 12 as well. And I believe that we can shift select all these and do those font things all at the same time so you're not touching each individual. So I'm shift selecting just my text. There we go. Remove the manual kerns so that they're spread out. Kerning is the space between letters. Um, go back to text. and then just get things lined up. Um, for me, making little adjustments like that is easier in Inkscape. It's much more like just dragging and dropping things around. If you're more comfortable working in R, go for it. Um, I don't have a preference. I just want to make sure that you have a lot of um, options at your disposal. So you may agree with these aesthetic changes. Maybe you don't. That's fine. Um, you've got the tools. Um, you've got the creativity and the vision. Just make it happen.